Hi guys, it's Xenia, welcome back to my channel. So the day has finally come. I am finally doing my perfume collection. This is like my most requested video to date on my channel. I get a comment pretty much every single video that I upload telling me like, where's the perfume collection? When are you gonna film the perfume collection? We want a perfume collection. And I feel like lately it's been a lot more persistent because I told you guys a couple videos ago that I'm gonna be doing this video soon. Let me just say buckle up for this because this is going to be a crazy long video. It's not going to be a long video in the sense that this is just gonna be one video of me showing you all of these because that would be impossible. We would be here for three years. So I kind of told you guys about the format that I was thinking to do this video in and it seemed like most of you guys agreed, which is that I'm going to be splitting this up into parts and it's going to be four parts. I know that's a lot of parts, but it's just, I mean, I have so many that it kind of needs to be that way. So the first part of this video, which is the video Video you're seeing right now by the way it's like thundering and rumbling outside so if you hear that that's what that is this video part one is going to be my designer perfume collection so this is this whole top row up here is all my designer perfumes my more high-end I have a couple niche just higher up there perfumes more expensive perfumes that is what this video is going to be but this is going to be part one of the designers and my designer perfume collection is actually going to be split up into two parts because i have the most of this category so i feel like you can't even tell on camera just how many i have just because there are more perfumes in the back that you can't see so yeah, there's a lot up there, so I have to split this into two sections. Part three of this video is going to be my cheapies, my more affordable perfumes. That's basically this whole down row right here, and it's not as many as it's in the top. Like, it's not as filled up as, as it is up there, so that'll kind of be easy for me to get through, I think hopefully. And then the fourth and final part of this video is going to be all of my celebrity perfumes. That's basically this whole bottom row down here. And then over here, I have some more affordable perfumes. And probably when I'm talking about my affordable perfumes, I'm probably going to also add those perfumes. And those are basically like my dupe house perfumes. So I have Juliana's perfumes up there, Okja, um, Be Layered, basically all of like my collabs. So I will quickly just kind of run down those in the third part of this video. And I know I'm doing a lot of talking <laughs> in this introduction and nobody likes long introductions. You can skip straight away to the video, but I get so many questions about my perfume collection. As far as my organization, because I also get a lot of questions on that, I have them all organized in this little cube. I actually have two of them stacked. So down here at the bottom, I have all of my Victoria's Secret and Bath & Body Works body sprays. And that's a whole other video. If you guys want to see that video, you can um, let me know. But these are little like cube dividers. It's one whole thing. And I got... And I got this from Target. It was very inexpensive and it's held up perfectly and I love how it stores my perfumes. I think that is basically all for this very long introduction. Before we get into this video, please make sure that you're subscribed to my channel and turn your post notifications on. And if you wanna see the part one of my perfume collection, the designer perfumes, then keep watching. All right, so I'm going to start off with actually not what's up there. I'm gonna start off with what's over here. So I have this little tray that I keep on my dresser that I like to display some perfumes that I'm, I don't know, I like the bottles of and I'm using. And by the way, this beautiful tray, it's very like antique looking. It is a mirror, so I'm trying not to blind you. This is from Amazon. I will have it linked in my Amazon storefront in my description box. Anyways, I have four perfumes right now. These are very random perfumes, but first one, Baccarat Rouge, my go-to. I love Baccarat Rouge. I know everybody talks about this. It's extremely unique. I know not so much anymore because everybody wears it, but it's still unique. I don't know how to describe this scent. It's a scent you have to smell yourself. Ariana Grande's Cloud smells pretty much very similar to it. I don't think 100% though, but if you wanna know kind of like the gist of what this smells like, it smells like that. It's a very strange, almost like ozonic, or I don't even know if that's the right word. It's very like sweet and sugary and kind of synthetic but in the best way possible. It's a huge compliment magnet and it is just a gorgeous, stunning perfume. By the way, let me preface this video by saying I am not going to dive into notes in this video and all of that. I've talked in depth about all these perfumes in previous videos, so I'm just gonna kind of like give a brief description. Next up, I have my Killian Love Don't Be Shy, the perfume that Rihanna supposedly 
was said to wear. One of you guys actually commented in my previous video where I was talking about the Killian dupes that the way that it basically came to be that people found out that this was Rihanna scent is her makeup artist supposedly leaked it. I don't know, one of you guys told me that. So anyways, this perfume is amazing. My dog is currently licking her butt. So if you hear candy, thank you. This is a perfume that is meant for a sweet lover. If you don't love sweet scents, you are not going to like this. This is sweet to like an incredible, crazy power. And I can basically summarize this by saying that it smells exactly like Sweetheart's candy, the little Valentine's candy. It smells like that sweet, sugary, almost like marshmallow powder of those candies. The third perfume that is on that tray is Givenchy Hot Couture. I have the Eau de Parfum. I know that the Eau de Toilette seems to be the more preferred version of this perfume. I haven't smelled the Eau de Toilette, but I'm perfectly fine with this. I'm more than happy with this. This is such an incredible perfume for me. I get compliments on this. It's one of my most complimented scents ever. It's so good. It kind of has this very characteristic um smoky vibe to it but it doesn't end up smelling that smoky on your skin at least for me a lot of smoky scents like perfumes that have like a smoke note into them or incense or something that comes out smoky they end up smelling really really smoky on me and i don't like to smell like i just chain smoked a pack of cigarettes but this does not smell like that it has like this hint of this i don't know how to describe it it is kind of smoky i guess but it is also dominated by a very prominent raspberry note and i think that that's just like what's holding this together it smells very sexy this is like a girl with red lips and a leather jacket it's very sexy bad all the way type of perfume this perfume is really random to be on this because i feel like on this tray i have my more like bougie high-end perfumes but this one i just have it on there currently because i sometimes wear this to bed and i sometimes wear it when i'm just like running out the door as just something easy to throw on this is chanel chance oh fresh this is a very fresh scent it's very crisp and it basically smells like every citrus known to man to like a high-end level it's almost to the point where it has like this cologne vibe to it because it lacks pretty much any level of sweetness it's just very very fresh and citrusy and equally very like cedar like and woody and i really like it a huge compliment getter and a very easy to wear fresh fragrance kind of something you can wear to the beach the pool it just smells fresh. All right, now we can get on to what is up here. I'm gonna start off over here and work my way to that way. So first off, Giorgio Armani C Passione. So this is a flanker of the original C, which you'll also see later in this video. This is a really nice perfume. Kind of smells like a little drop of the original C in there, but it's kind of different in my opinion. This one's a little bit softer and a little bit less like wowing than the original C is. I think it's a little bit easier to wear in case you are somebody that finds the original like a little too much for you because it is more of a stronger scent. This one is not. I think this is much more crowd pleasing. This is just a nice scent. I don't think it's groundbreaking or anything like that. It's just staying in my collection just because it's one of those kind of like easy grab type of fragrances, but I wouldn't call this like a crazy amazing like you need to have type of fragrance i love the bottle but next next is Giorgio armani c what is this called i don't know why i'm completely drawing a blank on what this is called so i'm gonna try to look it up oh my god it's c fiori i don't know how i forgot that <laughs> but c fiori is basically like a more powdery version of the original c it's way softer it has a very soft like powdery note i think it has some more like pretty pink florals in it and it's kind of just like the more girly softer feminine version of the original c like original c is like sexy bold woman this is like soft princess like feminine has a soft floral vibe very sweet still it's like a sweet powder scent and then i have the original c so this is like a huge compliment getter i feel like men really love this it's a very like wow type of fragrance my first impression ever of this perfume was that it smelled like straight up wine there isn't an actual wine note in here but when you spray it out before it's had a chance to settle on your skin it straight up smells like red wine and then it settles down and then kind of like this vanilla sweet aspect comes in but it's kind of like a woody floral sweet scent and it's very powerful and alluring very much like a date night like you're going out 
on a hunt for a man type of fragrance. So that is C, the original. Next, I have my Kayali Eden Juicy Apple. I love this perfume. This is the only one that I've kept its packaging of because I really like the packaging. I love this, as I've mentioned previously. This is straight up like blueberries and apple. It smells so good. It's so juicy and vibrant. And it is such an alluring scent. Another like highly complimented scent. There's something very captivating about this and when you're wearing this literally everyone around you will smell it and they'll be in like a love spell it looks like a little potion and that's kind of like what it does if you are like a fruity berry type of lover this is like a stunning scent it also has kind of a bit of like this sweetness about it almost like a vanilla type of thing mixed with those fruits love it so as i'm going i'm gonna be removing them from here just so that i don't um, get mixed up when I do the part two of this video. Next up, I have my YSL Libra. Libre. I never know how to say this. This is a powerful woman type of fragrance. This has lavender in it. It is another bold perfume. It has a great projection and lasting power. And it kind of goes in the same category as Thierry Mugler's Alien for me. I feel like this one is a little bit like more wearable if in case you don't like the original alien but it is a very like wowing fragrance it smells like a ceo it smells like a boss lady it just smells incredible like very very feminine but like mature sexy these are obviously in no particular order because i'm going from like one type of perfume to the other this is completely different from why i saw libra this is Dolce Gabbana Light Blue. I have found myself wearing this a lot lately because we are in summertime now. This is a very crisp, fresh scent. It has like this unisex vibe to it, similar to uh, Chanel Chance Eau Fresh, even though they don't smell similar. But they both have a lot of citrus notes in it. This one's also very like woody and citrusy. It's very, very refreshing and it smells like the color blue, like ocean, aquatic, like that's this perfume. Okay, I'm gonna take a quick... Uh, food break because I'm starving and I will be back. All right, I'm back Has some food. So I'm gonna Reapply my lip oil. Let's get back into it. <laughs> All right next. I have a Dior J'adore This is like kind of smells like pear. I believe this has melon in it and that definitely shines through in here it's kind of like fruity floral in a really, really nice way. If you guys are familiar with Heavenly by Victoria's Secret, they're not dupes by any means, but this kind of falls in the same family as Heavenly. It is a very heavenly, very feminine, soft fragrance that will get you a lot of compliments just because it smells feminine and more fresh than anything. It is a bit of a mature fragrance, but in like a modern way, it's not too mature. Basically, the words that I would use to describe this are pretty, lovely, feminine my one true love i love this perfume and i'm holding on to it because i only have a little um one fluid ounce of it this is my ysl manifesto luckily for me i have found dupes to this perfume they're not exact but there are some perfumes in my collection which i'm going to share with you guys later that kind of give me vibes to this so i'm very happy about that this smells like a sexy spicy vanilla it is a bit mature the projection on this is insane like it is probably like my most projecting strong fragrance you literally need like a couple sprays of this and you're good to go pretty much all day like it lasts forever like i said it's just like a spicy vanilla very like mature in the best way like very very sexy it is a strong fragrance though so just be aware of that but yeah i love this i always get tons of compliments on that perfume okay oh it's all the way back there. YSL Black Opium. Of course, I have this in my collection. This is a classic, and I know this gets so much hate because it's been around for a long time, and it gets hate just because everybody wore it at one point. So people were like, no, I don't want to do what everybody else is doing. But you know what? Like, at the end of the day, this smells good. So I don't care what anybody says about this perfume. Like, I think it smells good. I think it smells sexy. It's basically like a coffee vanilla very sweet fragrance but in like a sexy way it's kind of like going clubbing i'm gonna describe a lot of my perfumes as being sexy but that's just because most of my perfumes are sexy because that's what i look for in a fragrance so i'm sorry if that gets repeated a lot in this video it's just because i love sexy perfumes this is one of those for me i love layering this just to kind of change it up sometimes i do wear it on its own but you can layer this up with something else 
if you want to change something about it but it's basically like a coffee vanilla mixture it's very sweet kind of floral but more so sweet than anything just to kind of compare it to something a little bit more maybe familiar uh it kind of falls in the same family as into the night by bath and body works like you could layer these together and you'll smell like sweet delicious like praline coffee vanilla type of mixture okay so that next up i have juicy not juicy what am i talking about jimmy choo fever this is a flanker to the original jimmy choo which i don't hate but i also don't love i don't have it in my collection this is completely different the original jimmy choo is it kind of has a level of sweetness to it but it's more so like a patchouli dominant perfume i do love this one though because this is completely different in the fact that this is sweet it kind of almost reminds me of black opium but like even better it kind of actually reminds me a lot of victor and ralph's bonbon it kind of just smells like sweet candy it's another very sexy perfume it's literally called fever so it's a very like captivating feminine scent that is very sweet but in kind of the same way that black opium is sweet with like this little bit of like a twist to it just like this one has that coffee note this one has a little something to it you're wearing like a little black dress that's this type of perfume Mm, I love this. I haven't smelled this in a bit, but I love it. I need to keep wearing that. And then speaking of Jimmy Choo, this is another like love of mine when I discovered this. This was a blind buy. I picked this up at like TJ Maxx, I think. This is Jimmy Choo Illicit. This is like caramel, vanilla, sweet. It kind of has like this spice about it. It's very, very sweet. Mm, really good. It's kind of like woody as well. It's so good. I find this to be extremely sexy. Once again, I love Jimmy Choo Illicit. Another one that's very sweet and captivating. Next up, I have Prada Candy Gloss. This is a flanker to the original Prada Candy. I find the original Prada Candy kind of like plain. This one though, I think has a lot of potential. Some people compare this to um, Tom Ford's Lost Cherry. It kind of has a vibe of that in here because this does have a cherry note. It's kind of like a powdery cherry fragrance and it almost kind of has that um, makeup powder type of perfume. The same way that like Julia Has a Gun Lipstick Fever has. It has like this, I don't know, like makeup lipsticky sort of like makeup powdery sort of scent. Like very sweet and feminine and it just smells like makeup. I can't explain it, but it's also mixed with that cherry note. And this is definitely a really, really nice one. I think this is one of Prada Candy's best, if not the best flanker coco mademoiselle by chanel this will forever me be in my collection just because i love smelling this because it just kind of takes me back because this is my mom's like signature scent she doesn't really wear it anymore she's evolved now but this is literally all she wore like she would not put this perfume down she would go through bottles on top of bottles on top of bottles of this I'm gonna be honest, I don't love this. It's a little bit too floral, a little bit too mature, and a little bit too patchouli heavy. Like, the patchouli is very dominant in here. I do think that in comparison to a lot of Chanel's fragrances that are mostly on the mature side, I think this one is, like, a little bit more wearable, and it definitely smells very classy it's a very classy serious type of scent and i basically just have it around to like smell it because it reminds me of my mom that's why i'm keeping this uh, perfume i haven't worn this i can't even tell you the last time that i've worn this perfume to be honest and that's kind of what happens when you have a big collection but I'm still not going to ever get rid of this. Like, I'm constantly giving away perfumes and um, selling perfumes. I don't ever like to let perfumes just sit there and go bad. But this one has so much nostalgia to me. So my, probably my all-time favorite perfumes in the entire world. This is coming with me along with some per other perfumes. But this one is like no doubt coming with me to vacation. Valentino Donna Born in Roma. This is like probably my signature fragrance. Like, I feel like this is what i smell like um this is like a bourbon vanilla sweet this puts me in a trance every time i smell it, like you know when you have a smell that you love and every time you smell it you just like go into another world that's this perfume for me it smells so incredible and it kind of like always takes me back to the first time that i ever wore this because i wore this for the first time before covid even happened when we went out to a club 
and we were just dancing and I remember getting whiffs of this perfume so it kind of just puts me there every time I smell it and I remember the next day I was um, washing all my clothes and my clothes still smelled so heavily of this scent it is so intoxicating and sweet that bourbon vanilla here is just doing magic Olympia by Paco Rabanne another one that I think is very sexy. This one is kind of like a salty vanilla type of scent. This has a salt note into it. I think it has caramel, I'm not sure. But I know for a fact it has vanilla. It's like salty vanilla, but it's not that beachy. Like it has this perfuminess about it, which sounds weird because this is a perfume. Like it smells like a perfume. But this smells like when you walk into an airport or when you walk into a department store that has perfumes that's that's what this smells like like every time i smell it that's what i think of that that's this perfume i think it's incredibly feminine and very very pretty but also sexy and yeah that salt and vanilla mixture are definitely like the more prominent parts of that perfume and it's a perfect summer fragrance without it being like sunscreeny or beachy or coconutty because it doesn't have any of that I'm gonna try to find a different word for sexy. I don't know, sensual? <laughs> this is this is the definition of that. This is Armani code. When I smell this, I kind of think of light blues, more darker, sexier, edgier, older sister. That That's basically Armani code because this one also has those citrus elements, but this has like ginger in it there's some spices into it that really elevates it where light blue you would wear this daytime you know brunch breakfast summer day beach pool whatever this is like you're going out to dinner like you did all that during the day but now you're getting ready and you're feeling your sexy self and you're going to go out to dinner that's like what you wear because it kind of has like this citrusy element to it but then there's spices in it if you like darker fragrances this is one to pick up. This is Ella's Brooklyn Sunfruit. I feel like it's so bright that it's hurting my eyes even just looking at the camera. But this is like a recent love of mine. I think this smells so good. It has some guava in it. Some really delicious um, summer fruits. I believe there's like some form of coconut. I don't know if it's coconut milk or coconut water or something in here. But there's some form of coconut in it. It doesn't smell like sunscreen and it doesn't smell like that heavy coconut. This has fig in it. I believe there's like either melon or pear in here. I'm not really sure. But the mixture of all of those just creates this delicious scent. And I don't know why. But this gives me like pina colada. Like I feel like when I smell this I smell pineapple. Even though there's no no of pineapple in here and for some reason my husband goes crazy for this stuff the first time i ever wore it he noticed it and he gave me a compliment and i feel like most people that have reviewed this seem to kind of have that similar reaction to it like it just does really really well as far as like gaining compliments i feel like a fruity summery scent that is sun fruit by ellis brooklyn okay i haven't talked about this in so long this is my Givenchy l'entredite i don't know how to say it this is very powdery, very white floral-like, but there's something dense in it. Like, it's not just airy florals. It's dense and sweet, like very, very sweet florals. Some people say that this smells like bubblegum because there's tuberose in it, so tuberose can kind of give off that vibe. I don't think it smells like bubblegum, but it is a very uh, sweet scent because of that, like, tuberose, and there's, I believe there's some sort of, like, fruit in here. Um, but it is very white floral type of scent and in my opinion like this can kind of tend to be a little bit on the mature side It's not extremely mature But I feel like this is kind of more like on the polarizing end like something that you have to smell Because you either love this like really really love it or you don't this um, Perfume is kind of like on the edge of leaving my collection. In fact, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be listing this on my Mercari very soon here <laughs> But I'm just like, I have a hard time letting go of it because I wanted it for so long. This is Paco Rabanne Pure Excess. This has a lot of hype on YouTube. This has a very strange note in it and that makes it really unique. So I'll give it that. It's definitely a unique fragrance, but it has a popcorn note. And to me, when this completely dries down, like 15 minutes into wearing it, 30 minutes, then that popcorn note kind of dries down and it dies down. But I just can't get past how popcorny that it is. Like when it first opens up on me, it's like straight up popcorn and I just can't get with it. It kind of reminds me like 
of black opium if black opium were to have a popcorn note but when i spray this out all i get is popcorn like straight up popcorn and then it starts to get a little bit sweeter like it is a sweet scent overall but i can't get over the popcorn i love the bottle like partly one of the reasons why i don't want to get rid of it is because this bottle is so beautiful but it just it's not doing well for me alien goddess the perfect summer fragrance if you're into soleil blanc by tom ford if you're into beach walk by replica those type of fragrances this kind of falls into that family i do think that this is the better one of those two because those two i'm not too in love with and this one's a little bit easier for me to like um like it's coconut and vanilla but it's a little bit softer like those two kind of almost give me sunscreen vibes and it can be a little too potent this one is not it's very like wearable as i've always said about this perfume i'm mad at the fact that it doesn't smell like the original alien considering it is a flanker but i'm getting over that okay like i know i mention it every single time i talk about this but you know it is what it is it smells nothing like alien it's just like a beachy vanilla -y, coconut there's nothing really not to like about this perfume like the original alien is so polarizing because of how unique it is this one is not like this one everybody can love because it's just vanilla and coconut my little brother liked this on me and my little brother hates pretty much every single one of my perfumes like he'll smell a perfume and be like oh my god that smells horrible it could be like a 400 dollars perfume and he will say it smells horrible but with this one i was shocked truly i was like okay i'm keeping this in my collection forever because it's the only perfume that my little brother likes <laughs> paco raban is redeeming himself with this this is lady million they also uh have one million which is the male version of it my husband wears that because it's my favorite fragrance on him ever but this one unfortunately doesn't smell like it i wished when i got this because it was a blind buy that it would like smell like it i would have loved it to smell kind of like the original one million but just like more feminine and it kind of threw me off because it's way more fresh than i anticipated it but this one is another one that's like, I feel like Paco Rabanne does a lot of perfumey scents, like scents that smell like perfumes. I know that makes no sense, but the type of perfumes that you smell when you walk into a department store, once again, like it's that perfumey scent. It's really, really good. But this one has like this similar vibe to Olympia kind of, where it's, it lacks that salty note, but it has a little level of sweetness to it. And it also is fresh and woody and very sexy like i do find this one really really sexy smelling it more and more there's almost something that kind of slightly reminds me of one million in it mm, it smells so good very sexy i love that next up this is chanel chance au tendre this is a bit of like a regret of a perfume blind buy for me well actually it wasn't a blind buy but just a bit of a regret of a perfume because it's just basic and probably the worst part about it is that it lasts just like a little over two minutes like it literally disappears off of your skin the second that you put it on so that sucks considering it's not cheap it's a chanel fragrance and i've also just found so many dupes to it like perfumes that are not even supposed to be dupes to it but that just smells similar to it and i don't know i just regret buying it i'll probably list this on my mercari it's very like aquatic florals and that's pretty much it. It'll get you a lot of compliments because it's a crowd-pleasing scent. Like, it smells fresh and feminine and kind of like pink aquatic florals. But that, that's about it. This is a new love of mine that I didn't think I would love because it screams florals. There's literally a flower for the cap. This is Dolce by Dolce & Gabbana. This is the original Dolce. They have like a Dolce garden. They have like a, a sunshine one or something. I don't know what they're called. But they have a ton of flankers in this range. The other ones, I'm kind of like, I don't know. They're okay. But this one, I fell in love with this. It's very floral. And for somebody that likes scents that are more so sweet and not that floral, this shocked me because I love it. It's almost like really pretty, easy, on the nose type florals. And I almost get like this melon type of scent into it. It kind of reminds me of J'adore in a type of way but i almost prefer this like way way more and it's so beautiful this is the type of fragrance that you wear on a spring day with like a floral sundress this is another one that's coming with me on vacation because it's just an easy to wear everyday 
feminine fragrance and for the summertime because of how light that it is it's long lasting don't get me wrong but it is like a softer fragrance it's beautiful love that dolce by dolce and Gabbana. next up i have floral street wonderland peony this i discovered because it is kind of set to be a dupe for a perfume that you'll see in my next few parts of this video when i show you you know that perfume i'll talk about it when we get there but you guys already probably know if you watch my channel but i love it i love guava um in perfumes and this one has guava in it there's cotton candy in it it's very very sweet very fruity and there is peony in it peony is like it's a, a almost like a sweet floral, like pink floral. It's not a floral that smells like florals. Like it's not too pungent if you are somebody that doesn't like floral perfumes. But I think that if you are a perfume lover, you would love this because it has, you know, those beautiful feminine florals in it with also this sprinkle of sweetness, but not in a way that's sickly sweet. So I love Floral Street. Wonderland Peony, that guava in here is so delicious. Guava just smells like candy. Next up, I have the Seven Virtues Vanilla Woods. Vanilla Woods is a woody vanilla scent, as the name suggests. I believe there's pear in it, which definitely comes through in this fragrance. It's kind of like pear and vanilla. It's a light fragrance, but it's really weird because it's a light fragrance that's not too strong and powerful and it doesn't project like crazy but it lingers on the skin and through time it kind of becomes a skin scent and turns just really good like it kind of just becomes one one with your skin and it ends up smelling really really good and it's long lasting there's actually organic vanilla from madagascar in this fragrance it says in the back here that it's best for alleviating stress calming and soothing to the overworked so because of that like woody vanilla and because of how soft it is I guess it's supposed to give off that effect and I mean I, I find that true I don't think it alleviates stress but it is a very like likable soft fragrance that you can just wear and it'll kind of like boost your mood in a way I feel like so yeah it's a really pretty one I have Gucci Rush I still keep it in its packaging I don't know why but this perfume is the strangest packaging of perfume that I own it's just a little red block it looks like a Lego piece straight up but this is a very extremely unique perfume it's also been around for a very long time this doesn't really smell it smells unlike anything that i own i believe there's like suede in here it's so weird i don't know how to begin to describe this perfume it's fresh more than anything it kind of has like this plasticky feel to it like smells like just plastic it's so surreal like it's strange it's a strange perfume it's been out i think even before 1999 like it's been around for a very very long time i don't know how to describe this look up the notes because i don't know how to describe this it's a very strange perfume my dearly beloved my alien by thierry mugler i love this perfume i don't know why i have a little tiny one ounce of it but actually i do know why i have a little tiny one ounce of it it's because I don't use that much when I use this perfume like this is two sprays and you're done because that's all you need because those two sprays are gonna last you all day this is like a jasmine perfume predominantly like there's literally like three notes in it which I think is like jasmine amber and I don't know why I'm completely drawing a blank to the third note that's in here but it's really good I love it it's so sexy to me like every time I spray this it's so sexy to me and it smells like grease to me because like five six ten years ago i don't know people in greece this is all they wore like i'm telling you this is all they wore this and angel those two fragrances especially in the around the time that they came out in greece everybody was wearing these so every time i smell this fra fragrance that's what it brings me back to it's just like sexy jasmine but a jasmine that you've never smelled in any perfume before it's a bit polarizing just because of its like strong quality that it has but it's worth it in my opinion we're almost down to the halfway point with um this video so next up i have gucci flora i don't know what this perfume is doing in this floral bottle because to me this straight up smells like the grown-up version of Viva La Juicy by Juicy Couture. It's very sweet to me. I don't really smell any florals in it. It kind of has like this 
sour, almost like pear element in it. It's supposed to be white gardenia, grandi florum jasmine, and pear blossom. But yeah, it's like all florals, yet it smells incredibly sweet. I think there's a note of brown sugar in here, and it just smells sweet to me more than anything. Think of just the grown-up version of Yula Juicy. That's what this smells like. This is a love of mine, Gucci Guilty. I love this fragrance. When I first bought this, um, I was afraid to buy it because all of the comments on it said like that it's not a good perfume it smells like baby i was kind of turned off because i don't really like super powdery or even worse baby powder notes like why would you just want to smell like baby powder and it's strange because when i smelled it i totally got what everybody was saying because there is this weird thing of baby powder in it and i know it sounds so strange to say baby powder smells sexy but this is literally sexy baby powder I can't explain it, but it's just what it is. It has like this powdery vibe to it, but it's also like perfumey and it smells like what you think a Gucci perfume would smell like. It smells like gold. It honestly does smell like gold. Like I love this bottle. I love that perfume. That will also be forever in my collection. Similar bottle to that, but completely different scent. This is 212 VIP by Carolina Herrera. This is a recent discovery and recent favorite of mine. This is like musky vanilla and I don't typically love strong musky scents but the way that the musk in here mixes with all the other notes and that vanilla just creates a very very sexy fragrance. I've gotten a lot of compliments on this scent wearing it out. It's so good like so good. Okay so we are at the exact halfway mark of this video so that's where this one will end and I'm going to start the second part so stay tuned for part two of this video. It should be coming out right after this video so you're not going to be waiting for long. I hope you guys liked this part one. Let me know what you guys thought of my collection. Let me know what you guys think of my collection so far but that is it for part one. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and turn your post notifications on and I will see you guys in part two. Thank you.